Thank you. Okay, Maki, can you call Julius to start it? Yeah. Do it if it's not available. Mr. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm hearing it. Uh, can everybody mute, please? Except uh, everybody mutes except uh, Julius. Julius, since you're not available, let me do what you do now. Here are special partner institutions without which you would not exist, right? And many of these people advance full support. I want to announce to you that one of them, Nick Baladad, no, Du Baladad Associates, you see there, is now the president of MEP, and she's doing a fantastic job leading MEP. Fantastic. As a matter of fact, no one that I remember in my long membership of MEP has been a store as her. She even sends people to her personal homes, right? <laughs> she's fantastic. Next slide, please. Next slide, you have, of course, the corporate members. There are three, no? Uh, Mineo Carlos comes here uh, almost all the time. We really appreciate it. He's our really guiding force, no? Of course, Pound Adventures, Gerald Calap is here 99% nine, uh, of the time, right? <laughs> and of course, Ray is always here. Thank you very much. Next slide, of course, are the members, no? The members are there and uh, they, they pay every year, et cetera, et cetera. We really appreciate it, right? Okay, and of course, we have lots and lots of people, as I said, 2,000 every month, no? 2,000 hits every month. Okay, now, Julius, you're there. Okay, please proceed, Julius. Hi, good morning to everyone. Apologies. Uh, um, my internet connection is a little bit bad since last Saturday. Okay, yeah. Um, so where, where are we at? Uh, I, I, I couldn't join through audio earlier. Um, yes, I, I just finished the listing of the partner institutions and the members, etc. No, and wow. I, I I want to be a co-host because I heard there might be some difficulties. I've told Maki to make a post just because there's a problem with your laptop. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thanks everyone for for your understanding. Okay. Yeah. So good morning once again. Uh, I'm here uh, as your chairman for the Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation. Uh, and uh, thank you again for uh, to Ernie, our president, for uh, helping me while I'm having some technical difficulties with my internet connection. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I think we've done the prayer, the national anthem, and the introduction of our partners. So I think I'll, I'll call on Ernie again to introduce our speaker for this morning. Ernie? Yes, it is my great privilege and honor, <laughs> and definitely my pleasure to introduce a guy I admire. I admire his old family. My father is the king of coconut virgin oil. The brother is the best, one of the best, if not the best health, health secrets we ever had. And here's another genius here, uh, Fabian Dairit, uh, they call him Toby, correct? And as you saw in the uh, notice, incidentally in the notice, you might have noticed uh, that uh, there are new things. There's a new logo. Instead of MEP, ABCD, it's ABCD dash MEP, definitely. I brought this up to the body before and you voted on it and all that. We talked to the the president of MAP, correct? Um, and um, and it's now Agribusiness and Country Development Foundation in partnership with the Management Association of the Philippines. We want them to be closer to us. We want to get uh, senior members or with us, correct? And of course, uh, there's a line that was there, but is missing. The nine, of course, is Ramon Ilosorio, uh, uh, honorary chairman, because he kind of revived this. It was kind of, it was alive with George and Kaiser. It kind of died when he came in a few years ago. He made it every week, no fail, huh? these 14 years. And of course, Bernie Yap was in his side and brings the wind beneath his wings. Now brings the, it's beneath our wings, right? And our board is new. It is everyone over 65. Now, 80% uh, is below 45, right? And one old guy there, um, yeah, namely me, right? Okay, but we are moving to that. Uh, now, having said that, I am say it's my pleasure to introduce him because he's talked here before. We're here, here, we want to update, but just for you to know, no? Okay, in the notice, maybe you didn't read it, no? Academic is totally qualified. In America, the top three were called HYP, Harvard, Yale, Princeton. It's hard to get in. He got in, not only that. He didn't master doctor right there, no? Okay, in chemistry. In addition to that, no, he was a fellow at Oxford, <laughs> at the best schools. His undergrad was Ateneo. Some would contest if that's the best school, but it's supposed to be a kind of good school. Right, um, and uh, and he has got, he learned in this school something called man for others. He's the most life is helping people, correct? Helping people, and actually today, as you might have read, he's going to talk about coconut. He chooses, but I want to state what Chairman Ramon Esor said before he died. No? He said, "You guys 
we've been doing for years every week, no fail. Nobody does that in the country. But we want to remember to you to remember our title. No? It's not education. It's called, you know, agribusiness, which means it has to be sustainable. We're not business, not sustainable. And emphasis on countryside development. And in the new board, they were saying, how can we say eradicate private stake that that's a no? We're here actually to help minimize poverty. It's there in the mission because when he died, we reviewed everything and they emphasized that. So having said that, Ramon said, after the forum, Ernie, what can you get there aside from being educated and interested and getting it from your own knowledge and maybe you'll apply it? We want, with God's gifts to us, getting education connections, we want to spread what you get in that forum. Now, why is this totally interesting to us? The coconut farms are the poorest uh, group in the whole country, correct? Okay. There's all this big money that wasn't given to them for a long time, right? It's still not being given. But the important thing is there was a time when America said it was unhealthy because the soybean lobby was fighting us and they were not telling the truth. And Toby Dairy, we had a meeting during that time, MEB, ABCD met with them no? And we had the team going to America because before when that happened, we sent a team to America. He found out that the stock of the US saying we're no good was funded by the soybean companies, correct? Okay, so we're kind of angry about that. They were lying about us. We went there, our sales went down, very not what was going to hell, because that obviously we recovered and Toby was there at the first time. It came out again a couple of years ago. So we met Toby and all the rest. MAP, ABC, they met with the farmers and all that, but we led this meeting, MEPBC that because of the talk. And they went to Maria again, so they, they started to hold the line again because they were saying the wrong things again. Now there's new things there about, you know, coconut oil being good for COVID. It's not yet completely proven, but but this is what Ramon is already wants. He wants after this talk, we want to find out what we can do to support the coconut farmers, correct? And here's the recent news. Two weeks ago, it was published uh, on Saturday, three days ago, at two weeks ago, there's a meeting. And it said that MAPABCD, at our initiative, is one of the few members, private sector, in the legislated, legislated by law, public private, council for agriculture and fisheries. There is no group in the entire government that's legislated like that. And we remember, and we brought up this idea that we want to make sure that the budget, first of all, is used properly because in 2020, 22 billion out of 66 billion were not liquidated, therefore massive corruption, massive waste. But more importantly, and this was included in the resolution, which never happened before, more importantly, that the budget that's used is not only waste to corruption because of the private sector monitoring, which they included in the resolution, but the second one is important to us, which is important for us today to make sure that when you get the money, correct, it, it is used for the right things. Sometimes it's used upon the suggestion of politicians or government. And now with this seminar, we will engage uh, Toby Dairy to help with some of you to, to do the correction so that the money is used properly for virgin coconut oil, right? Instead of being wasted. So we're, we're that's the job for MAPC of NXX. I would like to let you know that we entered the, this council only two years ago, but now we're a member of the overall council and those suggestions came from us, right? So they're listening to us now, no? All right, so uh, Toby, just want to let you know, I should educate us on this. Please remember Ramon Ilosaurio's words. He said, what can we, the audience, do to further your initiative? The last time we called the meeting with you and Mr. Lau, the head of Coconut, and there was a trip to the United States and we had articles published by us supporting you know. What can we do now, right, to support you further? Because they still need great support, right? <laughs> yeah, so so when you give your talk, well, two, two, two questions, uh, Toby. The first we want a personal, because as you know, before we ask the speaker and thank him, now we talk to the speaker after the forum to find out what we can do. So I'll call you in a short while. But to get a personal connection with the audience, we know about your brilliance. We hear about your thoughts, but give five minutes as to your personal life. How did you get into this? Now, so we get to you on a personal level. Five minutes on that one hour, and then give your talk. And at the end or during the talk, you say how we, your audience, we're not students, right? So we want to do something else. You want to spread the word with this connection with banks, officials, or whatever. 
what we can do to support your vision. As an example, there's this guy with this technology and no, no, nobody bought it. We introduced him to the head of all the hog racers. All of a sudden, he's selling in all regions of the country. Another one is there. So in other words, we connect, right? We connect. The last time we did it with you is we called the meeting. That's our call. We got Ben Yao, you, and the farmers, etc. And because of that, we planned a strategy to counter another offensive. We want to know what we can do, right? So in, in, in summary, five minutes of personal life, give us your thoughts. And very important, what can we do to support you? Because that's what Ramon Yosori said. Do not go out of that forum and smile. Go out of that forum, smile, and work to make our mission, which Ramon Yosori said, our mission is countryside development and poverty reduction, correct? <laughs> when they kill us in the state of propaganda, when they don't promote us and deprive us of potential jobs, that is not reducing poverty. That's increasing poverty. So you got to tell us what you want to do. Okay, so to Toby, I've had enough. You know, my ratio for you, your brother uh, became one of the best health secretaries and your father is an icon. He's an icon, right? Uh, to be honest with you, my daddy and he were friends and you two guys are far superior to the Ordonius children. Right? You're really great. And so Toby, I welcome you. Yeah, I went. I am May Robert. Hi, Barry. Hi. This is the best interviewer in town, I think. He's the head of our MEP ABC Leads Committee. It's fantastic. So, Toby, with that having said, we let Robert talk about his brilliant ideas. Just to let you know what happens here. You know, the last time there were like, you know, 18 plants. I wanted one of them. When I, by that time I went to the space, I said, sorry, uh, Robert got all of them. I mean, such a great entrepreneur, right? He moves so fast. And he'll be a great help in promoting this, no? All right. So, Robert, hold your horses. So will I. Let's give Toby the floor. Toby, ideally, don't take an hour. And he'll give like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and give it open forum. And I'd like to ask you this, Toby, two questions. Number one, up to what time can, can you stay with us? Usually, the contract is only up to nine. But we're here to talk about things about the forum. Up to 10. Up to what time can you stay with us today, Toby? Well, I can probably stay until about for 10, uh, quarter to 10. Great, fantastic. Number two, this is another question I have now. You know, they say they want to contact the speaker, right? They put it on the chat box, etc., etc. Now, fine, but people, especially those viewing abroad, there's 2,000 hits in one month now. Um, you know, uh, don't worry, 1,000 won't call. Usually about five or six long. Can you give us on the air right now? You can put in the chat box, but can you give us on the air now? And maybe your office number. What is the office number? Because you want to help, right? What is the, what is the office? What is the number we can use to phone you? Uh, uh, Mommy, I put it on the chat now. Yeah, but if you if you will, ah. uh, is it in your mind? Can you say it now? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. people they don't go to the chat box. <laughs> so yeah, uh, zero, zero nine three nine. Zero nine three nine. Nine one three. Nine one three. Six zero. Six zero. Four three. Four three. Okay, I'll repeat for everyone, even abroad. Two weeks later. It's like this is shown for free two weeks later. No? Mm -hmm. 939-913-6043. I want to let you know this. Many of the speakers give their office numbers. Toby's giving us his personal number. Wow. I mean, I'm sure I just want to call it. And he's so generous giving it to us, right? Because that's it. Uh, he wants us yeah, to be with him in this mission. So Toby, start with your personal life. Do your thing. Again, tell us what we can do. Thank you, Toby. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, Maraming Salamat, Ernie. Yeah, uh, well, when I got the invitation to uh, talk to MAP, I said, I said yes right away because I know how important this um, this group is. Um, as Ernie said, I, I think the last time I talked to you was uh, five years ago. So I thought, you know, it's uh, time for an update. Um, maybe a little about my personal life. As you mentioned, um, I did, you know, chemistry, the PhD in Princeton, and then I went to Oxford for two years on a postdoc. Uh, the work I was doing was main, mainly synthetic or organometallics. In fact, the processes that I worked on, um, their processes used to make uh, drugs because <clears throat> uh, my advisor, you know, had some um, partnership with the um, with um, drug companies to make uh, at that time mga ano, prostaglandins. Um, but anyway, thinking about it, I said, um, you know, after spending two years in offer, I said. Uh, well, I, I wanted to do something more important, <laughs> just making drugs. So this was, uh, I was about 29. 
And uh, I said, yeah, my, I shouldn't spend the best, my best years outside the country. So I decided to come home, uh, I went to Ateneo. And I, I shifted uh, almost completely. I started with medicinal plants. And I, the first project, and I guess that's also because my dad was there, uh, he, they assigned me to do work on Vitex and Mundo, Lagundi. Um, so that was the first um, medicinal plant that FDA, uh, BFA then, FDA now, um, approved as a pharmaceutical um, drug, uh, as a med uh, medicinal plant. Um, so I did the mainly the foundational chemistry work on, on Lagundi. Uh, and then later on, um, my dad was doing, been doing coconut. Um, he just gave me samples of uh, coconut oil. At that time, it was the Minola, just to do chemistry work on it, you know, I'll do this fatty acid profile. And then I started reading on it, and they said, Aba, mukhang maliatan ako ng Amerikano. So I, little by little, I got more into it. Um, and that's, I guess, that's that's how it all started. So I, I studied um, all about BCO, coconut oil. I had to learn a lot of, um, you know, medical stuff because I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, but I realized that the uh, medical doctors don't know any chemistry. Um, so there are a lot of errors in what they were doing. And so that's really my take on this. I, I'd like to share with you uh, updates as I, as the titles um, mentioned on, on uh, what's up with uh, virgin coconut oil. So maybe oh, that- okay. brief, Yeah. Sound uh, right, sound right. I want to let you know he's of course, uh, and and in a, a national scientist, uh, you know, National Academy uh, for Science. But in 1983, he was the best uh, scientist awardee, correct? But scientist. 20 years later, 2022, which is last year, he got, again got best scientist for coconut and all that. And he led the fight when he went to America. They're fighting all these top level people funded by their companies. He led that fight. He went there with the team. They went to many states. And they stopped it. So he's our hero then. He was a hero when I saw him five years ago. They did it again. The fight was not so great because they were not winning. That time we were losing the battle. The coconut oil sales were going down. The farms were suffering. When they were in then five years ago, he did it again, stopped the downfall. So he's actually not just a scientist. He's, a, he's revolutionary, right? Who cares for people who, instead of having drug companies, went and did this stuff on Lagundi, et cetera. And here we are today. Okay, here we are today. Okay, I just had to say that that we look at you not just as a scientist, mm -hmm. but also as a guy who loves man for who loves people, etc., and devotes his life uh, to poverty reduction in a sense. Okay, thank you, Tori. Yeah, well, I like to say the fight's not won. In fact, uh, at the end, I'll, I'll, as you said, I'll, I'll mention what, what what should be done. So okay. I'll start my slides. Uh, just tell me if I'm going over time. It's already eight twenty one. So, okay, um, so you see my um, slides. So yes, I'm gonna talk yes. about the uh, benefits and challenges of uh, coconut oil. Wait, there, um, just to show you, these are the, all the products you can get from the coconut. And I'm just, I just put a box on what I'm gonna talk about today, food. So in fact, um, the coconut is really a multi, multi product. And um, you're, we mentioned about, it's actually a very difficult um, technically, uh, technologically to do all of these products because you really need a, a good system to do it, you know, value chain and all that. Uh, Jun Lao would talk about it. Um, so it's, this is not a simple um, project, but there's, it has really a lot of potential. And this slide really just shows uh, all the products you can get from the coconut. And I'm just gonna talk about one product here, uh, that's BCO. So um, these are the, my outline. I'll talk about five things. Uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil is a natural MCT oil. Um, well, these are just a, one of the few slides that have um, you know, chemical structures on it. Uh, on the left, you have the medium chain fatty acids or uh, called MCFA. And these are, the C is the number of carbon atoms and six means that there are six carbon atoms in that molecule. So the medium chain fatty acid goes from six carbons to 12 carbons. And the long chain fatty acids are 14 carbons, so about 18 carbons. And they always talk about saturated. Saturated would be that structure you see on the upper right. That means it's carbon with uh, just all hydrogens connected to it. 
Uh, so it's saturated with hydrogen. And then unsaturated, you have what you see there, what we call double bonds. Um, but uh, another way of thinking of unsaturated means also unstable because unsaturated fatty acids easily oxidize. Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's for another topic. Anyway, so this is the profile of um, coconut oil. And uh, we'll focus a lot on lauric acid, uh, which is 12 carbons, and it's about half of the fatty acid uh, composition of uh, coconut oil. Now, this is a table of um, fatty acid profiles of seed oils going from coconut, corn oil, olive oil, palm oil, rapeseed oil, or canola, safflower, sesame, soybean, and uh, sunflower. Now, uh, just note two things from here. First, if you look at the carbon-12 composition, um, and this is in um, slightly different units. This is grams fatty acid per 100 grams of oil, but it's, you know, it um, gives the same result. Um, coconut oil has 41, 42 grams of uh, lauric acid per 100 grams of coconut oil. And coconut oil is the low, highest lauric acid uh, content of all, of all um, seed oils. So you see all the others are zero or you know, 0 0.1 in the case of palm oil. So it's really co coconut, which um, has the highest C12, and that's very important. Now, looking at the other part of it, coconut oil has the highest medium chain fatty acid content, greater than 53 grams per 100 grams. And if you look across the table, um, they virtually have uh, negligible medium chain fatty acids. So coconut oil is really a unique um, vegetable oil or seed oil. Um, the, the, the Americans, I think, are picking on it for different reasons. Uh, well, first of all, because it's consumed all over the world and they want to take over um, the um, seed oil market uh, globally. We'll talk about that later. So just as a quick um, review of what virgin coconut oil is. Uh, coconut oil is, is pressed from the fresh meat and there are three processes, expeller, centrifuge, and fermentation. Um, the fresh meat contains about 35% coconut oil. So when you take the dry, uh, so this is fresh meat, you squeeze that, you get about 35% uh, in coconut oil. Uh, so VCO is obtained directly from fresh coconut meat without chemical processing. So that's what, this is what distinguishes virgin coconut oil from refined um, de deodorized coconut oil or RBD coconut oil. So that's the um, cooking oil, uh, coconut cooking oil that you find in the um, supermarket. And VCO is generally recognized as safe. So there's no problem um, taking it. So let's go to um, the second part. Medium chain fatty acids provide energy and more. So here we'll focus on the liver because the liver is a key organ of the body's energy metabolism. So here on the left, we see the liver. And I've just highlighted here that what we're gonna look at in the liver is the uh, mitochondria. The mitochondria, as you know, is the, um, the organelle of present in all cells and they convert um, energy sources, such as fatty acids, uh, sugars, and proteins, if, 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 if you want to, uh, um, if, you are, if you're low on the others, then they start um, metabolizing proteins. Um, but preferably, it's really just carbohydrates and the uh, lipids or fats. Uh, mitochondria are the energy producing organelles in all cells. So all cells will have uh, mitochondria, but here we're focusing on the liver. And the major dietary sources of energy are carbohydrates and fats. Now this is a, um, maybe it's a bit um, complicated. Uh, this is what the, um, the inside of the uh, mitochondria would look like. And we'll talk about mitochondrial energy sources. So what goes into the mitochondria's energy? So of course you have the um, fatty acids. Uh, we won't go through the um, details. Um, and you're gonna have medium chain fatty acids, long chain fatty acids, and PUFA uh, means polyunsaturated fatty acids. So among the three, the medium chain fatty acids are rapidly utilized by mitochondria for energy faster than all the others. Uh, long chain fatty acids, in particular, the polyunsaturated fatty acids tend to be packaged in lipoproteins. These are the chylomicrons, LDL, HDL, and they're stored as fat. So in general, the medium chain fatty acids get metabolized for energy. The others are going to um, fat cells. And the high linoleic acid, uh, these are omega-6 fats, uh, may promote metabolic dysfunction. So if you take um, 
Uh, linoleic acid is one of those what they call essential fatty acids, but you can't take too much. If you take more than 5% of uh, linoleic acid, it may promote metabolic dysfunction. And this is what exactly what's happening in the US. So let's look at the other source of um, energy, it would be glucose. Um, you get glucose from starch or from sucrose or um, table sugar. Now sucrose will give you glucose and fructose. So starch and sucrose are, they call them carbohydrates, but they have different um, composition. For sucrose, half of sucrose is glucose, the other half is fructose. Um, talk about fructose later. Now the blood, <clears throat> the glucose concentration in the blood, it's important to maintain that between 30 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. So usually they tell you if you're 100, over 100 glucose, then you know um, your glucose is high, but you shouldn't go below uh, 30 uh, milligrams per deciliter. And to um, control that, that's where insulin comes in. So insulin is an essential regulatory hormone for glucose. So insulin is there to keep the concentrations between uh, 30 to 100. Now, if you go too high over 100, then high blood glucose may lead to insulin resistance and advanced glycation end products. Uh, these are um, um, uh, anyway, they're proteins that, that become dysfunctional because the glucose reacts with them. And if you take high sugar, and especially fructose, and here you have high fructose corn syrup, uh, leads to dyslipidemia. Because glucose and fructose may be sugars, but they are not metabolized in the same way. And a high carbohydrate diet can increase triglycerides, and these are small, dense um, LDL. Now, because triglycerides are, are fats, are lipids, People think that triglycerides are caused by a high fat diet, when in fact, um, triglycerides are caused by high carbohydrate diet, especially if you have a lot of fructose. So if you take a lot of uh, sugar, um, your triglycerides will increase. Now this is a, um, this just came out April 19th, about two weeks ago. Um, says study, uh, study says no more than six teaspoons of added sugar a day. Um, this came, this was an article in the uh, uh, British Medical Journal. So now they realize that um, having too much um, sugar is not good. And um, here they recommend uh, six teaspoonfuls, uh, six, six teaspoons of um, sugar a day. And uh, I think it goes up to only one, one uh, sugary drink, one Coca-Cola per week is their recommendation. Now, the other source of energy would be uh, what they call ketone bodies. And here you have um, key compound is what we call beta-hydroxybutyrate or BHB. Uh, and that's on the lower uh, right of this graph. And um, beta-hydroxybutyrate is produced when you fast. That's about fast more than 12 hours, 15 hours. Um, so that when you, when you have this fasting diet or intermittent fasting, that's what you're producing. When you have a low-carb diet, and if you have a high fat diet, especially if you have medium chain fatty acids. So um, beta hydroxybutyrate is produced in the liver during fasting and with a high fat, low carb diet. And it's um, associated with ketogenic diet. So for weight loss, diabetes, and uh, possibly Alzheimer's disease. Now this is a bit of biochemistry, but I'll just highlight here the difference between um, medium chain fatty acids this methionine fat acids, which you see on the upper right of that figure, um, crosses the membrane directly uh, into the mitochondria for processing, while long chain fatty acids require carnitine. So, if you remember when they sell, you know, this, um, I think this is Del Monte drinks, they add carnitine to it as well as other drinks because carnitine is there to uh, help the long chain fatty acids uh, get into the uh, mitochondria for processing. But if you don't, you know, nor naturally, then medium chain fatty acids will do it um, uh, freely, while long chain fatty acids need assistance from carnitine. And the so the benefits of my medium chain fatty acids go beyond provision of energy. Um, here, this is a um, an article um, came out 2021. It says medium chain fatty acids serve not only as an energy source 
but also regulate glucose and lipid metabolism. The rapid transport and metabolism of major chain fatty acids provide additional clinical benefits over other substrates, such as long chain fatty acids. This has prompted interest in the use of medium chain fatty acids for treating metabolic and neurological disorders. So, uh, medium chain fatty acids have a special role as energy, but more than energy. Um, it also controls other, um, regulates um, other uh, metabolic processes. Now, uh, these are articles which, which basically show, say that medium chain fatty acids uh, can be helpful against cancer. Uh, these are studies done, done in mouse for colon cancer. Um, this is also another article, lauric acid uh, against colon cancer, and this is on breast cancer, uh, medium fatty acids and breast cancer risk. Um, so here, clearly, you, see, you can see that medium fatty acids can assist a beneficial uh, in cases of cancer, um, but you have to cut down on your sugar and replace them with medium fatty acids, and of course, the best source of that would be uh, coconut oil. Uh, for those who are um, trying to diet, uh, VCO improves adiposity. So it improves the, the fat deposits uh, that you have. Uh, you can't avoid having fat, but you want the um, brown fat and not the white fat. And so on the left, you have different types of fat, the brown fat, and then on the other side, you have the white fat. The difference between them is that the brown fat is more mitochondria than the white fat. And the white fat also releases um, pro-inflammatory um, cytokines. So if you're going to have fat, it should be uh, brown fat. And VCO can improve the, your brown fat. So this is an article, um, pilot study on VCO reducing visceral adiposity. Uh, these are in males. VCO 30 ml per day for four weeks reduces waist circumference, especially in obese males. So the fat tends to uh, deposit around the, the waist, and so that's what they measure. Uh, this one is a study in males, and VCO reduces um, waist circumference. Um, to be fair, this is another, another article. This one's on females, on women. So the same amount, actually, coconut oil, 30 ml uh, per day, 12 weeks, promotes reduction in abdominal obesity in women. So whether you're uh, male or female, uh, taking VCO uh, may reduce your um, waist circumference. Uh, VCO may increase ketones. So um, <clears throat> this article shows that uh, medium triglycerides can increase uh, ketone bodies, as uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, originally, um, what they use is commercial MCT oil, which is mainly C8 and C10, uh, no C12. Um, and uh, the table at the bottom is the profile of uh, VCO. So VCO will have about 15% of C8 and C10, um, if you take all three of them, then it's 64%. Um, C8 and C10 produce ketone bodies faster than C12. And um, I'd like to highlight uh, Dr. Mary Newport. Um, uh, if you haven't seen her videos, uh, her husband developed Alzheimer's uh, early on, and she um, tried to enroll her husband in a clinical study, but he was too far. Um, you know, too far in the Alzheimer's um, scale, so they refused uh, him in the clinical study. So she researched it and found out that um, BCO coconut oil um, had uh, MCTs. And so she used coconut oil uh, initially for her husband, and her husband improved you know, even after two weeks. But then found that a combination of uh, BCO and MCT oil uh, was the best. I think it was a uh, uh, one is to three or something, some mixture. Um, but uh, Dr. Mary Newport is a, is a, um, has talked a lot about uh, using coconut oil um, for Alzheimer's mm -hmm. disease. Now, uh, I'd like to talk about this calorie confusion. So you see on the label all these things about calories. So this mm -hmm. one has 200, whatever, 30 uh, calories. I'd like to um, just give a brief background on what calories are. Uh, calorie is a, uh, actually it uh, starts in, in chemistry, physical chemistry. Uh, you take gasoline or coal and you want to know how much energy there is when you burn uh, gasoline or coal. So you use what is called a bomb calorimeter. And basically, you take the gasoline or the coal and you burn it, combust it, um, measure the heat, 
and that your product is CO2 and uh, water. And so the heat that it's released is the calorie. Now, um, what about humans? Uh, they're using the model of the BAM calorimeter for a, a human being. So the question is, are all calories the same? So in particular, if you want to compare the standard American diet, which is called SAD, so a SAD diet versus natural food, are they actually the same in terms of calories? But in fact, they, they're not, they can't be because glucose is not metabolized in the same way as fructose. Uh, glucose can be um, you know, taken up by the uh, mitochondria, but fructose, uh, a lot of it is stored as fat in the liver. So they can't be the same. Trans fat obviously is not the same as saturated fatty acids because trans fat can't be metabolized and it's harmful. But then uh, if you just use calories, they're the same. Um, and the American Heart Association wants to equalize you know, trans fat is as bad as saturated fatty acids. So they don't know their uh, physical chemistry. Uh, polyunsaturated fats are not the same as saturated fatty acids because polyunsaturated fatty acids um, you know, get metabolized to other things and some of it gets stored as fat, while saturated fatty acids um, get uh, metabolized in a different way. And long-chain fatty acids are not metabolized in the same way as medium-chain fatty acids. So clearly, in terms of the human body, not um, they're not a uh, bomb color emitter is not the same as a human um, body. So not all calories are the same, and certainly calories from the sad diet is not the same as calories from natural food. So this is really calorie confusion, and um, they use calories, you know, a lot, but they're not the same. So liver health is very important. You can have a healthy liver, but if you have a high sugar, high trans fat high polyunsaturated fats and high uh, long chain fatty acids, you can get a um, fatty liver, uh, what they call non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, um, about before the 1980s, it was, it was alcoholic fatty liver disease because those with fatty liver generally got it from drinking too much alcohol. Now, since the American diet, the SAD diet came in, then it was called the non-alcoholic fatty, uh, fatty liver disease. So certainly we want to avoid that. <clears throat> so you really cannot outrun a bad diet. In particular, you cannot outrun a sad diet. That's a standard American diet diet. So let's go to the antimicrobial properties of lauric acid. Now this is a table which shows the antimicrobial activity of lauric acid against us. Um, these are bacteria and viruses uh, which have been tested. So there are publications which show the efficacy of lauric acid against uh, all of these um, bacteria and um, uh, viruses. Some of these may be um, significant. This one, E. coli H157, um, H7, this is the E. coli that caused you know, um, uh, meat, which uh, caused deaths. And then you have uh, Helicobacter pylori, which is um, for um, stomach ulcers, causes ulcers. So it's the, um, the list is quite significant. And then of course you have Staph aureus, uh, which is common in skin disease. Now, um, there are many publications here, but I'd like to highlight this one. Our lauric acid um, has selective activity against bad bacteria, but does not kill good bacteria. And that's, I think, uh, a really um, remarkable um, discovery. Um, this is an article by some Japanese in 2019 entitled Measuring the Antimicrobial Activity of Lauric Acid Against Various Bacteria in Human Gut Microbiota Using the, the New Method. And in their abstract, they said, lauric acid is low antimicrobial activity against commensal lactic acid bacteria, so it does not kill uh, lactic acid bacteria, which are uh, beneficial, but high antimicrobial activity against pathogenic uh, bacteroides and clostridium, suggesting that lauric acid might modulate intestinal health. So that's a key uh, result here, that lauric acid is not a kill-all uh, compound, but it selects the um, bacteria that, that um, it acts against. And I, I don't know if there are any other antimicrobials that would do that. 
Now, this is a uh, study done in 2007 at uh, PGH, uh, virgin coconut oil for the prevention of sepsis among preterm neonates weighing less than 1.5 kilograms of PPPGH, uh, done by Dr. Mantaring and uh, co-authors. And here they report that DCO supplementation reduces the risk of sepsis, basically bacterial infection, uh, augments weight gain, and reduces duration of hospital stay among preterm neonates uh, younger than 35 weeks. BCO is recommended as a supplement in preterm neonates. So I believe um, some hospitals now re uh, regularly give BCO um, to uh, babies. Uh, I think I think they, they continue to do this at PGH, but also at Medical City. Um, this is an article um, written by Dr. Vermen Verali Rowell, um, um, the Filipina dermatologist with a high-end clinic, <clears throat> um, but she's also a researcher. Um, novel antibacterial and emollient effects of coconut and virgin olive oils in adult atopic dermatitis. So she could have reported that double-blind control trial, 26 subjects, each receiving VCO or virgin olive oil, and only 5% of VCO subjects remain positive for Staphylococcus aureus versus 50% of virgin olive oil subjects. So uh, this study demonstrates that VCO is much better than uh, virgin olive oil. Uh, now this is uh, talk about the antiviral activity of VCO. So we've been talking about bacteria and let's uh, move to viruses. Um, well, this is a study of my uh, dad. Um, he gave this paper in the year 2000. The study was actually conducted in um, 1998 in the um, San Lazaro Hospital uh, of uh, Department of Health. And they report that by the third month, half, 50% of the patients, and this is a relatively small study, about 15 patients, 50% uh, showed reduced viral load. And by the sixth month, eight patients had a lowered viral count. Uh, this is before the advent of all of these retrovirals, 1998. Um, so there's no treatment. So VCO, I, in this case, all the, uh, just coconut oil was used. And the CD4, uh, CD8 counts uh, showed a favorable increase in five patients. So all of the uh, uh, indications were positive. Um, unfortunately, there were not enough patients um, in the Philippines then to um, expand this study. Um, uh, but this study was followed, followed up by an Indonesian in 2016, and it basically reported the same thing that the, um, this was a six-week study of VCO versus non-VCO um, done for six weeks, and the CD4 uh, uh, counts increased in the HIV-positive people. So it just confirms what uh, my father um, uh, showed in um, when, uh, 1998. Now the question now is, um, talk about Alzheimer's disease. Can viruses cause Alzheimer's disease? Actually, we don't know yet what the cause of Alzheimer's disease is. You know, there, there are many uh, theories, but I suspect Alzheimer's disease can be caused by many, uh, you know, can, can be brought about by many causes. And one of them may be uh, viruses. So this is a um, publication which um, suggests viral involvement in Alzheimer's disease. I won't go through the details, but it just says that viruses may be one of the possible causes of Alzheimer's disease. And another study which uh, says that a particular virus, um, a Varicella zoster virus um, in Alzheimer's disease via reactivation of herpes simplex virus. So it's a more complicated process where you get herpes simplex and it uh, reactivates a dom um, dormant virus, um, the Varicella zoster virus. Um, but in any case, the, the, the suggestion is that Alzheimer's is a cause by viruses. In particular here, it would be the herpes simplex virus. So can VCO kill the viruses that cause Alzheimer's disease? Now, this is a study, antimicrobial properties of lauric acid and monolaurin in uh, virgin coconut oil. This is a review. And in this review, they show these um, three, you know, two and a half pages of tables of bacteria and viruses against which lauric acid is and monolaurin are active. And um, I'll just uh, expand the one on the uh, 
This one is the table on the antiviral properties. And here you have the herpes simplest viruses, which I put a box on. So lauric acid is uh, effective in um, um, killing off or other, um, controlling um, herpes simplex virus. So um, this, there's a this real possibility that um, BCO can uh, prevent or um, kill the viruses that cause Alzheimer's disease. But that needs a clinical study. But there are some clinical studies already done. This is a, an article um, in 2020, Potential of Coconut Oil and Region Chain Triglycerides in Prevention and Treatment of Alzheimer's Disease. So there was a uh, hypothesis, and on the right is a clinical study done in Spain, uh, 2017. Um, how does coconut oil affect cognitive performance in Alzheimer's disease? Now, this uh, article did not exactly say that it cured Alzheimer's disease, but it says that it, it improved cognitive abilities of Alzheimer's patients, uh, which is consistent with uh, Mary Newport's um, um, observation on her husband that um, VCO um, improved cognitive abilities, uh, but it did not, not necessarily, um, you know, remove Alzheimer's disease completely. So Alzheimer's may have been there, but cognitive abilities may have been improved. So um, clearly there's um, enough evidence that a VCO may be useful uh, against Alzheimer's disease. So VCO uh, can actually provide ketones uh, as energy for uh, mitochondria in the brain, as well as antiviral activity. Um, now this, I think, um, will have to be uh, proven by more clinical studies. So this is the list that I showed you earlier. Now I'd like to uh, add SARS-CoV-2. So here we go to our fourth topic of this presentation. VCO is effective against SARS-CoV-2. Uh, before that, I'd like to just review what, you know, what happened then. Uh, this is in uh, 2020. Uh, the one market was uh, shut down by the Chinese to, I guess, to remove all the evidence. Um, January 1, 2020. And then they also uh, prevented people from uh, visiting the Wuhan Institute of Neurology. Um, now, in, um, this is an article um, that Mary Newport and I posted on the internet, uh, first on January 31, 2020, and then we revised it February 7, uh, 2020. Instead of putting it in a publication, we thought we'd put it out on the internet where, you know, because we publish it, we wait six months for it to come out. But this is basically a literature review to say that uh, there is evidence, I mean, there is literature evidence that BCO may be active against, uh, at this time, they still call it the 2019-NCOV um, novel coronavirus. So that was in January 31 when we first posted it. And then uh, this is a um, screenshot of the, you know, we started giving uh, webinars. Um, this was in February 4, 2020 on the potential of coconut oil um, against uh, NCOV-2019. Uh, so we started the campaign then uh, very early on uh, during the first month, uh, well, January 2020. Um, fortunately, uh, the USD was listening. So um, first they funded a small study and then a clinical study, which um, was carried out by uh, FNRI the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, um, then led by Dr. Agdepa. Um, this is study one done in Santa Rosa City, um, July to November 2020. It is a relatively small study, but gave um, favorable results. And then study two, which is still not published, uh, done in Valenzuela City the following year, almost at the same time, August to November 2021. Now, uh, just a brief um, comparison of the two studies. Um, uh, both of them were randomized. Um, the Santa Rosa City is double blind, uh, placebo controlled. In other words, uh, the patients did not know what they were taking. And there was a placebo group, uh, no, no coconut oil, no VCO, and they had that VCO. Um, small study, there are about 65 or 70 patients. But the results uh, were enough to be statistically significant. Uh, during study two, because um, they had to measure exactly how much VCO they were taking. This was randomized, but open label, so the, the patients knew they were taking VCO in cups. Um, 
but still placebo controlled single blind <clears throat> intervention uh, was in meals. Uh, VCO was provided, given in the meals that the patients didn't know. But um, in, the, in, in study two, uh, patients knew that they were taking VCO. The dose was the same, duration was the same. But the difference also was that um, from July to November 2020, the problem with the infection was the, the Wuhan virus, probably the Wuhan virus, because that was still close to the start of the pandemic. In November, in uh, 2021, um, the predominant variant then was the Delta variant. Variant, if you recall, uh, you're all worried about the Delta variant. Um, and also antibiotics already and other meds were provided. Uh, when the uh, pandemic was still new, first year, they didn't give any meds because they didn't know what's going on. Second year, they were giving antibiotics already. So that is um, somewhat of a major difference because now antibiotics were provided. Now, this is uh, there were two uh, parameters. One was really from symptoms. Um, and as you can see here in the Santa Rosa study, um, the VCO group um, recovered more rapidly than the control group. Uh, these are mild cases. So many mild cases uh, do not proceed to serious cases. But nevertheless, um, the VCO group um, had faster relief than the control group. By day 18, all of the VCO group uh, uh, had 100% relief, while the control group, uh, day 23. Uh, in Valenzuela City, uh, this was the second uh, year, um, just basically the same, faster relief uh, from BCO than the control group. Um, of course, by this time, uh, antibiotics and other medicines were being provided already. Um, now, the other parameter was the C-reactive protein, which measures these um, um, antibodies uh, which um, indicate inflammation or um, infection. In the um, Santa Rosa study, the VCO group uh, dropped faster than the control group. Um, the five uh, milligram per liter mark is like the, the boundary between uh, inflammation and no inflammation. And VCO clearly had a faster relief from um, C-reactive protein. Uh, in the Valenzuela study, again, the VCO group had the faster relief, um, but the control group also eventually um, had relief at day 28. Uh, but in both cases, VCO still um, provided um, faster um, on the from um, measurement of C-reactive protein in the blood. Now, the other indications which are useful is that the um, CD4 levels were higher in the VCO group than the control group. And the fasting blood sugar was also better in the VCO group than the control group. So they were eating the same diet, but the VCO group had um, lower uh, fasting blood sugar. Uh, total cholesterol, the VCO group increased just slightly over the control group, uh, but cholesterol really shouldn't be a problem. Um, LDL cholesterol increased slightly in the VCO group, but the HDL also increased in the VCO group. So if you plot the ratio of uh, LDL over HDL, the VCO group did not change. Uh, the control group was more um, not, um, uh, variable. So the key takeaways. So the VCO group experienced more rapid recovery from COVID-19 symptoms, as well as elevated C-reactive protein. Uh, VCO raised CD4 levels. Uh, VCO lowered fasting blood sugar and maintained a healthy LDL to HDL ratio. But more important, maybe most important, the VCO showed efficacy against different variants of SARS-CoV-2 virus. So we predict that VCO will not be affected by mutations in the coronavirus. So even today, while there's still concern over uh, the coronavirus, I think if you keep taking your VCO, you'll be protected against all types of, um, all variants of the coronavirus. So finally, I'll go to the challenges of uh, coconut oil. First, we need to battle the misinformation, mainly from the uh, American Heart Association. And we need to go up the evidence pyramid. Now, Ansel Case transformed the American diet. In uh, 1961, he's, he came on the cover of Time Magazine, so he was very influential. And he said, Americans eat too much fat with meat 
milk, butter, and ice cream. The calorie-heavy U.S. diet is 40% fat, and most of that is saturated fat. The insidious kind that increases blood cholesterol, damages arteries, and leads to coronary disease. Well, that was his claim in 1961. Now, following his claim, the um, Americans got fat. So this is the U.S. Uh, adult obesity prevalence. So starting in 1960, it crept up. And then 1981, dietary guidelines for Americans came in, and it really zoomed up. So the Americans now, um, this is certainly one uh, correlation between the Ansel Keys diet and uh, American obesity. Now, the, um, this is the industry um, partnership between industry and the American Heart Association. So this is uh, from the website of Crop Science, uh, Bayer. Uh, Bayer and Liberty Link soybeans help protect hearts in America's heartland. So they say for each bag of Liberty Link soybean seed sold for the um, 2017 season, Bayer will contribute five cents to the American Heart Association's Healthy for Good movement for a total maximum donation of half a million dollars. Um, and then they'll, of course, they'll do their own promotion. So this is really a partnership between uh, Bayer sells GMO, the soybean lobby, and the pharma industry, and the American Heart Association. So they're partners in um, money. So here I'd like to show the um, link between these you know, four um, event um, people and institutions. You have the, the American Heart Association and its journal circulation. So when an obligation comes up in circulation, circulation is basically the home journal of the American Heart Association. So whatever comes out there is, 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 is the imprimatur of the American Heart Association. You have Ansel Keys, the Harvard School of Public Health, and the Sugar Research Foundation. So uh, Ansel Keys started the cholesterol heart disease hypothesis in 1960, and he defended sugar in 1972. Um, there's actually some articles on this. So now the Sugar Research Foundation um, in 1967 gave money to two prominent Harvard professors, Steyer and Hegstead, uh, who became very influential because they, they uh, later on um, headed some important committees. And um, they basically they defend sugar, um, which Harvard is doing. Harvard School of Public Health defends sugar. So of course, a lot of the Harvard people um, are medical doctors and they, they occupy important positions in the American Heart Association. So their DECAM campaign is to replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat. Um, they claim that saturated fat is the same as trans fat. They defend sugar and they say that cholesterol is bad. And then you have industry, you have the American Soybean Association, you have Pfizer, which uh, sells a lot of um, statics, uh, beer, and they give money to the um, American Heart Association as well as to Harvard School of Public Health. So in turn, the American Heart Association gives the same campaign to the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. to replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, um, say that saturated fat is the same as trans fat, they defend sugar, and they say that cholesterol is bad. And many of the members of the committees of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans um, have connections with um, industry. And that has resulted in the uh, obesity epidemic now confronting the U.S. On the other hand, the American Heart Association has a lot of influence in the World Health Organization. Uh, and their campaign is the same. They place saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, say that saturated fat is the same as trans fat, to defend sugar, and to say that cholesterol is bad. Um, well, we know a lot of you know, problems with the World Health Organization now. It's funded mainly by the... Um, industry now, Gates Foundation and others. And this may really uh, result in uh, global obesity. So this is the um, problem that's confronting us now. It's really industry and uh, international uh, organizations as well as um, government um, organizations. So it's a, um, they always talk about the Mediterranean diet. What about the world? So this is the um, seven country study which Ansel Keys published, led, and the pure study. And uh, just to compare the results of these two studies, this is the uh, 
1986 report of Ansel T's um, diet and 15-year uh, death rate in the seven country study. And he basically said that death rates were related positively to average percentage of dietary energy from saturated fatty acids. So he was blaming saturated fatty acids for um, uh, death rates in the seven countries. But if you look at 18 countries, and these 18 countries, this was done in uh, 2017, uh, 18 countries had um, uh, countries from the high end, uh, the high, the rich countries, the medium income countries, and the low income countries. So this is a more holistic approach to um, you know, to, to look at the global health. Not to, in the answer case studies, these were mainly Western countries. And here, uh, their conclusion was that it was a high carbohydrate intake was associated with higher risk of total mortality, whereas total fat and individual types of fat were related to lower total mortality. And that saturated fat had an inverse association with stroke. So saturated fat, high saturated fat uh, correlated with low incidence of stroke. So there you have a comparison of um, the Mediterranean diet versus the global diet. And attacks from the American Heart Association continue. So this again comes from the journal circulation, which is the journal of the American Heart Association. Dietary fats and cardiovascular disease. This article came out in 2017, and they singled out coconut oil, uh, complaining that a recent survey reported that 72% of the American public rated coconut oil as a quote-unquote healthy food, compared with 37% of nutritionists. This disconnect between lay and expert opinion can be attributed to the marketing of coconut oil in the popular press. So they were saying that you know coconut oil is not really good; it's just promotion. But then, really, um, I want to say she can't fool all the people all the time. Uh, the people, uh, all the people, know better than the nutritionists and the American Heart Association. Uh, but the goal of the American Heart of the um, American Association and, and the industry is um, the global dominance of PUFA, polyunsaturated fats, and replacing the coconut oil. And this is the module two, the uh, replaced trans fat program of the WHO, which is endorsed by the American Heart Association. So if you just Google this replaced trans fat, you'll see all, all the sections there where um, they promote polyunsaturated fats and say that coconut oil is not good. So they want to globalize the uh, what's happening in the US. Um, so this is a major problem that we have now. So for the saturated fat paradigm, we have the emperor with no clothes. Uh, and these are the saturated fat policy, Ansel Keys, the American Heart Association and the WHO. And maybe we should add the Harvard School of Public Health as well. Um, coconut oil is really one of the healthiest oils in the world. This is a figure which shows the various things which coconut oil can do, um, but need clinical studies too. Uh, there are studies uh, in vitro and animal studies, but we have to uh, move to clinical studies. And it's clear that coconut oil does not cause heart disease and that a high um, linoleic acid diet, uh, that's an omega-6 diet, causes heart disease obesity and other chronic inflammatory diseases. So we really have to move up the uh, evidence pyramid. Uh, we have ideas, theories, expert opinion, there are in vitro studies, uh, animal studies, but we have to move up, do more epidemiological studies, uh, all the way to clinical studies. So this is the challenge that we have um, in front of us. So in closing, I just like to quote something from uh, the Bible. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you all things from Genesis. And uh, the green plants, certainly one of them is the uh, coconut. So on that note, I thank you for your attention and uh, welcome your comments and questions. All right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dairit, uh, for your very exhaustive uh, and uh, very comprehensive <laughs> uh, presentation on all of the the different research that has been done on coconut oil. Um, it Mr. Is Chair, Mr. Chair, may I yeah. interrupt? Uh, in the next five or 10 minutes, tell us 
what we can do to help you. Then we can open the form. Play, tell us what we can do to help you. You give in, 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 some indications, tell us directly. But we in this audience, and the 2,000 people who click in this month, what we can do yeah. to help you. Yeah, well, in fact, this is something which I also mentioned to the PCA. Uh, also the ICC, the International Coconut Community. Um, these groups, in, including uh, MAP, um, we focus on agriculture. But to solve these problems, you have to communicate with the medical profession, the doctors. And unfortunately, they're under the control of the um, American Heart Association. So um, the challenge really is to communicate this, at least to convince them that there's something wrong with what the uh, American Heart Association's campaign is. Um, also blocked this replace trans fat program. Uh, but among ourselves, we're talking among agriculturists, the agricultural community. Uh, we have to cross the bridge and communicate with the medical community. Uh, unfortunately, there's no one in DOH that's listening. Um, so that's really the, the challenge um, we have. <laughs> yeah, and then proceeding from that, then we, we do the clinical studies. But I guess you start with uh, step one. How do you communicate that what the campaign of the American Association and also the WHO now uh, is actually wrong? Okay, so, yeah. so thanks very much for that. Um, it is nine ten. Uh, we we as as mentioned earlier, we do have two sessions. We have the formal session and the informal session. So the informal session is where we open floor to questions and we try to encourage a free-flowing discussion. But uh, for those of you who do have to go ahead, uh, this does end our formal session. Uh, for those of you, uh, so let's uh, let's first uh, give our certificate of appreciation to Dr. Dairit. Uh, may we please present that? Sorry, the certificate, there we go. So the Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation Incorporated in partnership with the Management Association of the Philippines uh, with our uh, partner institutions, special partner institutions, uh, senior special partner institutions, <laughs> corporate and individual members. We all present this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Fabian M. Dairit for his invaluable support in the advocacy and promotion of agribusiness and countryside development, and for his commendable and unselfish services around this 15th weekly online meeting, uh, 2023, uh, on May 2 uh, in Mahati City, Philippines. Uh, sign myself as chairman and uh, Ernie Ordonez as our president. Uh, and for those of you who uh, are interested in our topic for next week, uh, do we already have a topic for next week? All right. So our topic for next week is, uh, next week is Enviro Homes. So uh, by Winchester Lemon, founder of EnviroTech Waste Recycling Incorporated. So uh, people who might be interested in environmentally friendly or sustainable uh, architecture, this might be an interesting topic for you to join. All right. Anyway, uh, and uh, before we end our formal session, may I please invite everyone to turn on your cameras? for a group photo, uh, just so that we can all say we've been here this morning. Yep. OK. Let me see. Yeah. Um, may I ask one of our secretariat, either uh, Vivian or Henry, to come to say? All right. Oh, um, naka open na po ba lahat? Two pages lang. Okay po. Uh, so we have two pages. Um, in three, two, one, smile. Okay po. Isa pa po. <laughs> in three, two, hey. one, smile. All right. Thank you so much po. All right. So uh, once again, this ends our formal session for this morning. If you can stay for our informal session, please do stay. But for those of you who have other appointments or other things 
to get uh, to uh, moving forward. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, yes, uh, I think Ito Carlos, one of the wisest people in our group. We yeah. really look forward to hear from him. But before we do that, you know, for three minutes, uh, the, the audio did not work, no? And those three minutes were you, was your answer to what we can do to help. We caught the last part of the three minutes, which says that there's a campaign going on. So since uh, this is very important, because it may not be taken up, and you're leaving around 9.45, you got about 35 minutes. Could you repeat the three minutes that we lost? In other words, what can we do? We, we caught the last part about some campaign, right? That maybe you want to sub in. Could you repeat, no? Because it was lost in the audio. Uh, Toby, tell us what we in this association can do in three minutes or less. Well, um, actually, there's a very influential association, but um, you're dealing mainly on agriculture. But what we have to do, I said, is to cross the bridge um, and communicate with the medical profession. So it's because a lot of this, well, actually, all of the issues that I talked about are related to um, health. And so there's actually the nutritionists and the uh, medical doctors. Um, UH is not really doing anything about this. So, and um, I think the strategy really is to find out how we can um, influence the medical profession to look at, you know, to review what they're doing and um, basically open the lines of communication <laughs> to uh, address the, the concerns that I mentioned. Oh, okay, okay, sound bite, no? It, of course, we like that, but actually, it affects our coconut farmers' incomes very much. Oh, no? yeah, yes, of course. So, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so yes. It, it used to spin. But just to let you know, in the past, no, you feel responsible were saying that the paper was sitting three months without action. When we connected them through us to the DA, they moved in five days. In other words, we may not get the same success with the doctors, but that's what we do here. We try to do things. And mm -hmm. actually, when we go to the medical association, we'll probably bring a DA undersecretary with us now so that you'll say, Pare. It's just not tell our farmers are suffering from the income stuff, no? And of course, uh, yeah, okay, uh, that's it. We can talk some more. Okay, Chair Julius, I won't talk again, I believe. So please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. So uh, for those of you who uh, have to go ahead for other appointments, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Uh, for those of you who are joining us two weeks later through our social media, thank you for joining us. Uh, Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation is a nonprofit member supported organization, uh, and we rely on the uh, support of our members to do what we do and bring you these uh, timely and relevant topics uh, to you every week. Uh, if you are interested in uh, supporting us further or uh, gaining access to our wide network of agribusiness and countryside development organizations, uh, do consider joining us as a member. Send us an email to introduce yourself at register at mat-abcdf.org. Link is in the description. Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you for everyone joining us this morning. If you can stay for the informal session, please stay. Uh, and uh, I'll see you again soon.